We just closed on that Ocean Master, you guys. I want to take you along, kind of show you what goes into selling a boat. We had it listed, um, and we had quite a few phone calls on it right away. Got it under contract, and took a little while with COVID. You know, the travel was a little tough, but Brian came down, loved the boat, just finished the deal on it. And I just want to take you to the day where uh, I took him down there. Jim and Debbie are the boat owners, super nice people there. We've become friends. I just want to show you what goes into it, you know, getting on the boat, going for a sea trial, a survey. And uh, if you're down here in the Florida Keys and you have a boat you want to list for sale, let me know. I'm trying to put my uh, social media platforms to use on that and spend a little more time on land with the family so I'm not fishing as much. But uh, Well, we're going to survey and sea trial another boat. This is how my mornings start out now. The diaper genie is being filled up again. There we go. Let's go check that Ocean Master out. And uh, Brian's coming down. Let's see how uh, everything goes today. Got our breakfast, our keys. Getting some water, here we go. What a much bigger boat than mine. Kind of nice looking too, right? Now, I don't know if it was your nephew, but somebody told me to call you, I think, a funny name on here, but I can't remember what they yeah, said. Well, it was probably my nephew, so you can avoid that at all costs. <laughs> all right, what's his name? Dustin, but he's not That was be... him, it was Dustin. <laughs> all right, Dustin. I'm not gonna sell him my boat if he's a wise guy. <laughs> all right, you can't be a wise guy, Dustin, but here we go. Beautiful Ocean Master. If not, I think it's the nicest one probably around. If not the nicest, top, top few, no doubt about it. But we're here with Mike. He's gonna take us on a sea trial. Tyler's gonna survey it. There's Mike. Mike's caught giant swordfish. How big, 678? 683. 683 pound swordfish they caught years ago and I was chasing that one for a long time. Got his beat now. Finally caught one a little bit bigger, but uh, he's back after him again. So we'll see what happens. We'll uh, walk you through it again. I think all you guys liked the other video when I showed uh, Serving the Grady White. And, and I hope this video helps you if you're making a decision to buy a boat. You know, there's a few things obviously. Find a boat that fits your budget, a boat that fits your needs. You know, if you're going to be fishing on it, taking the family on it, a little bit of both. And uh, no doubt in my mind, this boat here is designed for fishing. So here we go. Yeah, that's, we that's our bait stays nice in here. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do the sea trial first. And. Uh, See how she runs, and I'll take you along the way. So, here we go. That's your brother in law? <laughs> That's funny. I was just talking to uh, Willie O'Connell. He was hanging out with him uh -huh. recently. That's cool. <laughs> Small world, That's right? Yeah, Small is. world. <laughs> so, his motors back there have 3,200 hours. And my wife yes, it's a lot of hours, but they've been taken care of, and I still run great. So we're talking about Jersey Boy Reed. They know Pearl Street Market there. Absolutely. They said they love it, Reed. You hear that? So we're in the back of cut, middle keys here. around 26 knots. What's that? Your most fuel efficient is 26 knots. Here, you get one three, one four, but the cruise floor is around 28. Those motors are easy. You can actually run it almost 32 knots, but it's only 4300 at this. But I always, I bring it back just because your fuel is so much farther. Right, 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 right. So we're just raining around there. Motors run really good. About 26 and a half knots, one point, almost 1.4 miles per gallon. That was best cruise. We went around 28 knot cruise. It was like 1.2 miles per gallon. And uh, we saw just saw 33 and a half knots running into the current now. So right around 34, 35 knots top end. Heavy hull, sturdy. Not a speed demon, but comfortable. Go check out the rest of the boat now. 
know, Tyler's taking pictures of all the different speeds and RPMs, and he's gonna go through the whole boat here and uh, see what he finds, see how it looks. So that's the water moving through this bridge, you guys. It's ripping. We probably would have seen two or three more knots. I mean, look at that tide flow in there. Oh, this smells. Old Big Blue is gonna pull her out there. That's Big Blue. They asked if I brought a banana on the boat. I said, I didn't bring it on the boat. Some people don't like it. He's pretty serious about it back there. Mike's here now, we're gonna pull this out and Tyler's gonna start the survey here out of the water and doing the hull and all that, so here we go. And Reed, Pearl Street Market Reed, they said that you're a world-class sailor and your brother's very well known. I didn't know that, so. Now I'm not gonna live it down. But for the simple fact that the Islanders, when the ships used to leave the islands back in the day, they used to get green banana, I mean, uh, the green bananas. Right. Load them down. It was so heavy that when they got out in the Atlantic or the Pacific, wherever they were at, and the, and the weather got rough, it would sink the boats. And they find the bananas? The green ones. Oh, See, boy. once they really? turn ripe, they lighten up. Really? You guys just hear that? That's why he says you don't bring bananas on the boat. Ships would sink, green bananas be heavy. Boats would go down, they'd find them floating there. All right, well that's a yellow banana, but I ain't putting it on the boat, so here we go. Bananas on the boat. That's the golden rule of the, of the trade. Boat's going on the rack, we're gonna wash it off and uh, we're gonna start surveying it. So that's Jim and Debbie's boat there, the Ocean Master, and they just gave us a whole basket of Christmas gifts for Sadie and baby Claire. I love all these people down here. All right, let's go survey the rest of that boat there. These are V6 Suzuki, as you can see it right there, four liters. They actually just put fresh bottom paint on here and uh, you know, it's always nice to buy a boat from people that take care of it, and this boat has been taken care of as good as any boat I've ever seen, so. You can see the hull there. Now, they, you know, they keep bottom paint on because this boat stays in the water. So if the boat's worn in the water, you know, if you kept it on a trailer and a lift, you don't have to bottom paint them, but. How's it sound, Tyler? Solid? Yeah. Yeah. Heavy duty hulls, huh? Yep, sounds really good. Um, no blisters found. And uh, percussion testing shows you this thing's pretty good shape. Okay. You want to watch it dry. When the, when the, when it's wet, you'll see sometimes a blister that once it dries, it'll disappear. You see that quite a bit. So that's why you want to do it when it's wet? Yeah. If you guys just heard that, when we spray the boat, if it was wet, and that makes the blisters more noticeable, right? It does. So that's a, make a note of that. Ocean Masters are known for being a solid hull. Not speed demons like we said earlier, but uh, you know, just really well built solid hulls. How's it looking, Tyler, all right? Yeah. Making progress? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've only found one little minor problem. Gotcha. Um, what was that? There's a, there's a wiring bus. Not Mike's here and he knows the boat really well. He's run the boat the last five years. So he's helping Tyler go through everything and makes it easier if you're going to sell a boat, you know, if you have a captain for to the owner and they can help you with it. And they don't have to. We can figure out most of it, but uh just goes smoother and quicker and easier that way and show you all the ins and outs of the boats. It's I, I, I think it's, it's all a, worn off. It's so a two thousand. Two thousand? Yeah, okay. I can see it on this side. All right, yeah. Checking the bilge pumps, they work. Somebody's calling me. Oh boy, it's Reed. It's because he heard this guy was from Jersey. Jersey boy. You were a almost world-class sailor. Three-time All-American sailor. Oh my gosh. National champion, North American champion. 
You're talking to a big time blowboater here. I would have given you more respect. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think this guy, said, Brian, said he sailed with your brother before. Is your brother better? He says you got good food too. I said I'm waiting to get up there and try it. Well, you've been invited a number of times, so we'll see. He did invite me. Alrighty. One time I'm gonna come up there and come visit. I hope so. Alrighty, well, we're gonna keep showing this boat and uh, sea trial in it and surveying it. And we'll uh, check back with you. Alright, sounds good. Have fun. Good luck with the sale. Alrighty, hey, thanks, Brian, buddy. Alright, I'll tell him you said hey. Alright, see ya. That was Reed. After I found out he was a world class sailor, I had to make note of it. I thought he just liked fishing and cooking food there at Pearl Street Market. So they're flipping the switches up here, you know, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. And uh, check this out here, though. Mike just showed me that he made. That's a custom lead holder right there. So I do a lot of sword fishing. That'd be perfect on my boat then. You can put all your leads in there. Sometimes I got them in the bucket, the bucket tips over. This boat's really cool, though. I mean, beautiful in here. Really well done. There's the big box. You guys asked about that last time. There's a uh, macerator pump that pumps it all out there. That's a huge storage area though. But this was the normal fish box here, the everyday one. Snapper, grouper, mahi, wahoo, kingfish, stuff like that. There's a bus bar, not attached. They're gonna take a screwdriver and just tighten that up and overall in very good shape. Simple boat, it's a simple boat, you know. It's no frills, fishing boat. One under water, water light's not working. Um, one under gun of lights, so it's probably just a string of lights there. This is one other thing you mentioned. You can see that through hole right there. It's got some green corrosion on it. The handle still works good on it. That's one thing to keep an eye on. That through hole might last 10 years, but just when you go through those boats when you're buying, when you just want to look at all this stuff and have some pointed out and uh, you know, maybe put that out on the list in a couple of years if you're doing some work to it, change it on out. And always just keep an eye on it. Yeah. Yeah, there's underground lights. So it's a it's a all one unit thing. They've changed them now to where you don't even have to worry about bulbs. Okay. So we'd have to find where we can get those. The other thing, if you can't find a matching one, you just since only one of them is uh, out, you just change them. Same style. Right. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. underground lights out there, just gotta so swap the, it on out. The, uh, You can see that uh, cover for the bulbs up there, so that one needs to be replaced. But if we're just worried about replacing a couple of lights, we're in good shape. Yep, no doubt. Uh, Reed called me when he heard you were here. No, you didn't. Did he, he said to say hi. Yep. Did he really? Yep. I said. Oh, thank you. I said, Reed. I said I heard you're a pretty decent sailor, but your brother's better, and Brian's <laughs> here. <laughs> and I said I did tell him that you had good food, though. The great so, food. He said, he said great to say lobster hi. salad. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, I would probably just get four matching lights. So that one loose bus bar there, just put a screw in it. It's tight now. It's good. Yeah. Moisture meter? Yes. And then that brings it back up to 200. So every time you fill up, you do that, you're dead on. Every time I've done it, I run by that. I don't run by it. Cause this gauge, it'll read 90% <coughs> and then it'll kind of change and as you tilt the angle of the boat it changes sure. and stuff That's the most accurate. Tilt your trim front and back it changes. Yeah, right. so that one if you constantly keep up on that you're you're good and you're running. So your main is 200 Saddles, saddles are 50, 50 each. So 300 total. So the inside is the main outboards are the saddles. Yeah. 300 gallons of fuel. Just uh, Mike giving them some pointers there on the gauges. They reset it on the GPS every time. Put say 200 gallons in. Then they look at the fuel burnt. You know exactly how much fuel you burnt. Because the gauge is pretty accurate otherwise, but that way you know it's 100% accurate on what you burn. So, and I know a lot of other people do that on boats too. And you don't have to ever turn the synchronizer on, it's already on unless you turn it off. So okay. When you run it, you just you start it up and you can just roll it super simple. You got your stereo here, simple, your main tack systems here, and then all your switches there. Live well, live well, right? Yep. And then you have your underwater lights, your spreader lights up. I believe it's all four aft and just aft is down. Oh yeah. Uh, go ahead and turn on the uh, nav lights. Nav lights there. Yeah. And they're in the hard top so they're nice and clean. Green. We got red. Green or red. Okay. Where's the, oh the anchor's up top there. Um, is it on? It's on. It's 
spotlight works. Well, the boat looks good. I got a couple of things they're gonna just fix up, change out some lights, but uh, overall everything looks in good shape, guys. We're gonna make a deal. <laughs> We're making a deal there. He didn't come to Florida not to buy a boat, so. <laughs> We're making a deal here. We have a new boat in Jersey here for him. Reed, if you watch this, maybe you'll see this boat up there one day. If I come up there, Reed, to see you, I might see Brian. I might go fishing with him too one day. But you're bringing lunch, Reed. I heard you're a good cook. Lobster salad. You're bringing lobster salad from Pearl Street Market, Reed. Yep. Can you put me on a big striper? Absolutely. He caught a 55-pound striper. I don't need no 50-pounder, but I'll take a 49. <laughs> I'll take anyone, actually. I don't know if it's real good. Everything looks great. Ready to go. We're just going to go check the trailer, then we're done for the day on this bad boy. So the last thing to look over is the trailer. Well, that's a wrap. That was the trailer of the boat. You guys got to see it all. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe. And we'll see you guys next time. we got more videos coming your way. We're getting close to Christmas here in Alamorada. We'll see you soon. So your most fuel efficient is around 26 knots. What's that? Your most fuel efficient is 26 knots. And you get one three, one four, but the cruise floor is around 28.